The GB News pub is open and I'm joined by the Daily Telegraph defence editor and foreign affairs columnist, Con Coughlin, who's at home. Con, it's a remote talking pint, but welcome. Thank you very much. Well done. You've joined in the spirit, as I would expect, of a... I have. Yeah, and I'm a, a very nice pint of Sussex beer. I mean, I'd share that. <laughs> very good. <laughs> now, Con, you've been in and around the newspaper industry for a considerable number of years, about 45 years, uh, something like that. You've seen amazing changes in the industry. I have. I guess it's not as much fun as it was when you started. It's different. All I can say is it's uh, it's very different. I mean, when I first started at the Daily Telegraph in 1980, I remember going to the news newsroom, and it was all typewriters then, and all the typewriters were were chained to the desks. And I thought, surely the journalists at the Daily Telegraph aren't kleptomaniacs. And eventually, somebody uh, explained it was to stop journalists throwing them out the window in rage after they had a good lunch. <laughs> and I think somebody had actually thrown one out into Fleet Street and then he killed somebody. So uh, it was a very different environment, Nigel. Yeah, but is it still fun? I think it's fun, yeah. I mean, not least because of the subject matter I cover. You know, I'm covering a very bra- a broad range of subjects, uh, defence issues, global security, foreign affairs. Uh, the people I meet, like your good self, we've, we've met in the past on... Yeah. Uh, various events. Um, it, it's just great fun doing that. It's, it's a different environment, but it's still great fun. Yeah, well, good. I'm pleased to hear it. Now, you may or may not have seen, but earlier on in the show, I had Lord Matt Ridley on, uh, you know, co-author of this recent book, um, and there was some testimony given this afternoon in Parliament, and we've now got some really great minds who've done their homework, done their research on the origins of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, and these guys, it was, just Don- it was just Donald Trump to begin with, but these guys are now convinced that this came from that lab in Wuhan where they were doing experimental work on bat viruses. You feel very strongly, don't you, about the Chinese Communist Party and the way in which they behave? I certainly do, and I, and I welcome this kind of research from the likes of Matt Ridley. I think it's really important um, because, as, as, as we all know, the, the virus has, has inflicted not just a sort of great health calamity on the world, but an e- economic devastation. And I must say, I find it very odd when I go to get, buy masks that all the masks you can get are made in China. <laughs> um, and I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, having having sort of brought the the world to its knees with this with this uh, virus, um, the one country that seems to be gaining economically from it is, is China. So, uh, and of course, the Chinese have done their best. The Chinese Communist Party have done their best to cover up the origins of this, and um, you know, whether whether it came from a lab, whether it was research into biological weapons. I mean, th- this is a very murky area. And a lot of the Chinese people involved have just disappeared, uh, just like the tennis player. So you, know, you are dealing with a very ruthless authoritarian regime. And, and yet, Con, if any of us say, look, you know, it did come from China, maybe they should apologise, let's just remind ourselves, or if anybody even dares call it the China virus, suddenly we're wicked, evil, nasty people bordering on racism. I mean, what is this all about? Yes, well, I, 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 all I can say is that 10 years ago, and I was part of those, I, I was one of those who thought, you know, the Chinese are just really interested and concentrated in developing their own economy. They don't pose much of a threat to the outside world. And when I came across the Chinese in foreign climes, they seemed very self-contained. Um, and I think we've all had a big wake-up call thanks in large part to uh, President Trump, who really called them out. And there, there had been murmurings about what China was up to, but it was down to Trump who called them out. And, of course, it, it, it's completely changed the way the West does business with Beijing. But that said, there is still a constituency, both here and abroad, 
that really wants to try, I suppose appeasement's too strong a word, but they certainly want to reach a, an accommodation with Beijing so that we maintain our trade links. And they're putting trade above security in my book. Yeah, well, that's my worry about it. And I can't see us even attempting to hold China accountable. But beyond talking about the virus and China, uh, they've become increasingly bellicose, haven't they, about Taiwan. Um, over the last, as you say, 10 years, suddenly militarism appears to President Xi to be rather an important thing. And at the same time, we've got Putin with 100,000 troops massed on the Ukrainian border. Uh, and it seems much of the European Union, uh, certainly the Democrats uh, in the USA, quite a lot of people here seem to think that Russia's our biggest threat in the years to come. Is it Russia, Con, or is it China? Well, that's a very good, very good, very big question, Nigel. <laughs> um, I, think, I think in the immediate short term, Russia is... Russia needs to be taken seriously. Um, the thing about Russia, in my view, is it's the great disruptor. What Russia wants to do is undermine our democracy, challenge the weak spots in the Western alliance um, in, in its bid to reestablish itself as a major world power. And a lot of what Russia does is driven by paranoia. Uh, and it's not as big as it thinks it is. The, the Russian economy is very weak and will get yeah. a lot weaker if it starts meddling about in Ukraine. I think in, in, the, in the bigger, broader term, China is definitely uh, the bigger threat. And yeah. uh, as the head of MI6 um, said recently in one of his, his first major speeches since taking the job, you know, Beijing uh, is, is, is what we need to focus on. And in that context, you know, it was only two or three years ago that our intelligence chiefs were, were trying to convince us that having Huawei, uh, the Chinese telecoms I know. giants, I know. build our 5G, you know, I mean, it's just, but these are the same people who were telling me I was talking nonsense when I said we couldn't do this. I know, I know. Sorry. And of course, you know, there were many, many very high up in the political, civil service and business worlds in this country, very much in favour of Huawei. Some of them, of course, served, have served on its advisory board. Con, finally, I've got to ask you, you know, you've travelled the world, you've been a war correspondent, you've done all sorts of things. Uh, tell us about how you very nearly got kidnapped by Hezbollah. Oh, that, that was one of the low points. We've talked about you know, the excitement of journalism, but... Uh... I was, I was in Beirut um, in 1986, and in fact, I'd, I'd asked my then editor, Max Hastings, so Max Hastings is now, if I could leave, because it was getting very dangerous, and he told me to stay. And it resulted in me having a very uh, maudlin dinner with one John McCarthy. Um, and the next day, all hell broke loose in Beirut. I got out. I did phone John and say, you've got to get out of here. He stayed because he wanted to get another interview. So I got out, lying on the back seat of a car under a blanket, and John the next day tried the same journey, but was a bit more visible. And the rest is history. Five years changed to a radiator. So when I look back, back that was a really lucky escape. Yes, it was. And uh, do you remind Max Hastings of him, of him trying to keep you there? <laughs> um, well, on the rare occasion he talks to me these days, yeah. <laughs> Con Coughlin, I know it's been remote. Come and do it live in person at some point in the I future. Will do, yeah. Thank you for joining fun, me Nigel. on Thank Talking you. Pints. Very, very good to see you. Thank you.